This is what a lot of people believe. If you're up to date and you're running good antivirus, you're going to be okay, right? There was a time in the past where there were a small number of viruses out there, they didn't spread rapidly using the internet like they do today, and antivirus, for the most part, could kind of stay on top of things. So the AV vendors could look at new virus strains that were coming out, and they could update their product to be resilient against them. That was a long time ago now. Let's have a look at the state of affairs in more recent times. This is from Symantec's 2016 Internet Security Threat Report. And it's a really great report with some very interesting insights. And this one in particular is quite a startling figure. For the 2015 calendar year, Symantec found 431 million new malware variants. So think about that. That's almost 1.2 million variants of malware. So new variants, not things that we've seen before. Almost 1.2 million every single day. That's a very large number. That is a lot of work for antivirus companies to stay on top of because the malware is adapting so quickly. Now inevitably, this isn't 431 million completely unrelated strains of malware you find that attackers are continually varying the malware. They're adapting it slightly to try and avoid detection. But be that as it may, it's still 431 new malware variants just in one year. Look at that increase too, up 36% from the previous year. And that is a staggeringly high growth rate. When you see figures like this, you realize that antivirus can't comprehensively protect you. Certainly not the way antivirus has traditionally worked. However, it's changing. Let me show you how. Malware detection has to shift. It can't work the way it used to because of the enormous increase in the volume of unique malware strains. Now, the way we used to do detection was based on signatures. And what a signature would do is it would describe what a particular variant of malware actually looks like. The problem here is that not only are there a huge number of signatures because there is just so much malware out there, but the rate of which the signatures needed to be created was massive. And not just be created, but it then has to be pushed out to client machines so that when they've got antivirus running on them, they've got the full signature set and they can identify new threats as soon as they pop up. What the industry was finding was that signature-based malware detection was becoming increasingly ineffective. What we're seeing now is more of a shift towards behavioral-based malware detection. And what we're starting to talk about here is not what the malware looks like, but rather what it does. Let's go and take a look at what we mean by this behavioral term. User behavioral analytics which is often abbreviated to UBA, is a really rapidly growing area of malware detection. Now, the goal of UBA is to establish, first of all, what is normal, and then identify behavior which is abnormal. So let's look at what I mean by this, and we'll imagine for a moment that the particular strain of malware we're talking about here is ransomware. So malicious software which locks as many files as it possibly can and then demands a sum of money before the private key will be provided to unlock the encrypted files. So think about how someone might normally work on their machine. So for example, they spend a lot of time in file shares, their own file shares and team file shares, and they usually frequent the same places. Get hit with a nasty strain of ransomware, and you might find that suddenly they start accessing file shares that they'd never normally touch. From a behavioral analytics perspective, this is very different behavior. Why is Jane suddenly in there, in the finance file share, which she never normally goes to? This would be a UBA trigger. Jane is doing something strange, or at least her machine is doing something strange, because it could be the malware that's actually performing actions on her behalf. Another great example, Jane on a normal everyday basis may download some of the documents she's presently working on. Perhaps she's going to take them offline and work on them from home. 
If we suddenly see Jane downloading huge volumes of documents that's totally out of character for her behaviour, that's going to raise a flag. That is the sort of thing that Jane doesn't normally do. So you see how this is looking at the change in behaviour, and inevitably UBA products involve some process of baselining. So let's establish how people normally work, and then when deviations are identified, that's what's going to start to set off the alarm bells. Another great example. Jane normally only runs pre-installed software. She works in Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and the usual corporate sorts of apps, but suddenly something under Jane's identity attempts to install executables that will run on her machine. That's not what Jane normally does. That is abnormal behaviour. And this is the thing, Jane, for the most part, behaves like a normal office worker. Comes in first thing in the morning, works in the common file shares with the common application types that are already installed on her machine, and then goes home. But if Jane suddenly starts port scanning the network, that's not normal. That is something that's going to require some investigation. So this is how this emerging trend of UBA works. Let's start looking more at the behaviours because regardless of how quickly malware signatures change, people's behaviour is something that generally remains pretty consistent. So they're just some of the problems that we have within our networks behind the perimeter. Let's go and summarise the module.